that it, it's probably best articulated um, by Glaber Torres, who said today in Tampa, if they cheated in 2017 and 2018, then they were never caught those two years. Why wouldn't they have been cheating in 2019? Why would, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, why would you all of a sudden change? So no matter what Manfred has said, and in all the things that he spoke about, first the interview with Carl Ravitch and then the, the, um, the press conference he had at the, uh, the Braves' new complex in, uh, in um, Florida, he, he pretty much said, well, if they told the truth with immunity of 17 and 18, why would they lie about 19? But he did admit to Carl, you can't be 100% sure about anything. So here is um, Manfred on ESPN talking about, uh, was there any consideration on stripping the Astros title? Well, in the context of my original decision, um, it was something that we talked about and analyzed extensively. It was a big topic of conversation between me and my senior staff. And how did you land on the decision you landed on? Well, I, I landed on it, um, really several thoughts. Number one, um, it has never happened in baseball. Um, you know, and I, I am a believer um, in the idea that precedent matters um, and that when you deviate from it, you have to have a really good reason to do that, number one. Number two, um, I, I thought that the report um, gave people a really transparent account of what went on, um, that we put people in a position to make their own judgments about the behavior that went on. Um, that certainly has happened o over yeah. the last month. Um, and the idea of, you know, an asterisk or asking for a piece of metal back um, seems, you know, sort of a futile act. People are always know that there was something about the 2017 World Series uh, that was different, and they're going to know that because whether we made every decision right or wrong, um, we undertook a really thorough investigation and we had the intestinal fortitude to put out there the facts we found, even though they weren't very pretty. You know, Rob is, uh, Rob is talking about, like, the shame that the players have to live with. There's their punishment. So, oh. well, let me, let me take a huge leap here. Um, I'd say the vast majority of the world believe that O.J. Simpson committed a double murder all those years ago. He did not get um, found guilty by a jury of his peers. So he certainly has the shame, if he, if he actually knows exactly what he did, of knowing that he killed two people, but he didn't go to jail. What, what, what do you think he would prefer? What do you think the Goldman family would prefer? That he actually go to jail? Now, he did go to jail later for the memorabilia stuff, or the fact that he's walking around with the shame of knowing what he did without being punished. You had an opportunity to do something that was very, very strong, take away the quote-unquote medal. Well, I don't know why you couldn't do that. You're not punishing the players because you gave them immunity. So once that you took that bullet out of your chamber, the last thing that you have is you could actually well, take away their championship. That under no stretch of the imagination could they ever sign an autograph, Jose Altuve, World Series 2017. He couldn't do it. The more I hear this sound, it just more, it just infuriates me, okay? First of all, the precedent thing. Well, if that was going to be your case, then nothing would ever happen. There has to be a first time for everything. If our entire world was based on, well, it's never happened before, then literally nothing would ever get done. So, and he said, you really have to make sure it's worth it. You don't think this is worth it? They cheated to a World Series. Your entire fan base is disgusted outside of Houston. Every player is disgusted outside of an Astro. If not now, then when? So that precedent thing just drives me up a wall. Lazy, lame excuse. The second thing that infuriates me is this arrogance that there's no life beyond our own. Well, everybody's going to know the scandal. Bull, we'll move on to the next thing eventually. But 100 years from now, 200 years from now, you take that championship away, then they'll have to look up why. But eventually it'll get forgotten like every other scandal. And that, that 2017 Astros will always be there. 
at least with an asterisk, I'd have to go look up and find out what the heck is that it, it's there for. But if we're to stand alone, do you really think that 200 years from now it's going to resonate as much as it does right now? Weak. I, I really, I'm starting to lean towards the fact that the end game of this is that Manfred's out of a job. I think he really has to contemplate resigning. He is actually coming off as a buffoon to where the owners will not be able to support him. And don't, doesn't he realize that he keeps dropping the ball to the point that the owners will just lose you? Because if baseball continues to look like a jerk, he's going to be the face of that, and the owners will lose him. He's lost the players already, and if he's lost the players, not based on some controversial call, Michael, or a fine or a suspension, he lost them because a championship was ill-gotten gain. The players are disgusted. Disgusted with him. Don't you think the owners feel the same way outside of Crane? And Crane's probably still ticked off. He got fined the five million. Once he loses the owners, he loses his job. He this, can't survive this. This Michael K. Show Spring Training Report brought to you by Two by London, the engagement shop at London Jewelers. Rather than play all of his cuts, because uh, he, he doesn't come off sounding like great. The ramblings of a madman. But the, 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 <laughs> there's a couple of things that really, really do bother me in this. Where he said that he has warned the other uh, managers. Don't throw at the Astros or there's going to be punishment. So somebody who throws at them because they thought that they cheated or actually did something against them, they're going to be punished more than the Astros because the Astros players have not been punished at all other than the shame that he speaks about. Now, now also take this a step further if you really know baseball. You're taking the inside pitch away from pitchers when they face the Astros. So you're giving the Astros an advantage as they come up to the plate. They don't have to be worried about being moved off the plate. But forget about being thrown at. They don't have to be worried about being moved off the plate because the umpires are going to be on high alert because the commissioner has told them to be on high alert. He's already warned the managers. I don't understand that. Everything is being set up to give the Astros a short, easy landing, and that's not right. Now, let's listen to Mike Trout. Mike Trout, who, as I said earlier, doesn't say spit if he has a mouthful. Right. He never, I mean, he's, he's known as Mr. Bland. My favorite line is, he wouldn't tell you the price of a hot dog if you were standing next to the sign. Right. So here he is not happy with the Astros' punishment. You know, just, I don't agree with the, the punishments. You know, the, the player is not uh, getting anything. You know, it was a player-driven, uh, you know, hey, uh, it sucks because, like you said, a guy's career has been affected. A lot of people, you know, lost jobs. It's, it's, uh, it was tough. Uh, it would be me going up to the plate knowing what's coming. It would be uh, pretty fun up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just, like I said, it's a lot of guys also a lot of for some of the guys. And, you know, it's, it seems like every day something new comes out. So. That sounds like a laugh. <laughs> Well, I mean, it is it's L.A. Angels. Um, also, he, he gave his thoughts on the 2017 World Series. You know, it's tough because you don't know, you know, what helped him or what not. But if you know what's coming, it's going to definitely help you. I think, I think that's, you know, it's tough. You're taking a trophy away, taking, taking the rings away. Uh, I think they should definitely do something. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what, but uh, just to cheat like that and not get anything, it's... it's uh, <laughs> so your biggest player used the word cheat. A lot of players have used the word treat, cheat. I don't know if you saw Trevor Bauer's extensive interview in The Athletic. He just eviscerated Major League Baseball and eviscerated the Astros. So it seems like Manfred is dead set on protecting the Astros rather than the victims. The Astros are the criminals in this case. They're not the victims. And forget about what talk show hosts say or newspaper columnists say. The players in the game, every single one of them, it seems, believe the Astros cheated to win a championship. That's already been proven in 2017. And most of them believe that they were wearing buzzers. Now, the new thing that came out over the weekend is that Altuve did not take his shirt off because his wife didn't want him to. I heard this. But he had an ugly tattoo that really looked bad. And he, really, really, you just sent your team. This is more unbelievable than the wife story. You just sent your team to the World Series. Let's say you have the ugliest tattoo of all time on your chest. Let's say that for some some reason you fell asleep in the tattoo parlor and they put a tattoo of Mr. B Magoo on your chest, and it was just, it's laughable. That's what you would be thinking about rounding third and heading home as your well, team is going to play in the World Series. Come on, man. You're, you're, straining, you're straining every realm of, of, of credulity now, here. I don't get how we're supposed to believe this stuff. Now, I don't know if you follow John Boy 
uh, over the weekend. But he, he said somebody had sent him a series of pictures, and he retweeted it. I don't know if you saw this, that apparently there were some pictures of Altuve during the game, game six, yep. where he had a blue T-shirt under his jersey. But then in the at-bat, when he hit the home run, he had no T-shirt under his jersey. Now, the significance of this is if he had the T-shirt on, the buzzer probably would have been underneath the T-shirt. And maybe that's why he needed to remind his team not to rip off the jersey because it wouldn't be the T-shirt that they would see. It would be his bare chest. Now, why he removed the T-shirt, I have no idea. But this is the type of stuff that's going to be happening all year long. And this is something that the commissioner didn't bank on. He's talking about investigation. Fans, people around the game, the media, they're doing their own investigations. They're finding out their own stuff. And that's what they're, that's what, because there's so much evidence out there that's being uh, diagnosed and distributed and taken care of and looked at that the arrogance of Major League Baseball to think that their investigation stands alone, that they didn't find anything and that's all you need to know. Well, there's a lot of people that have access to that could see. We didn't need an investigation of Major League Baseball to tell us about the trash cans. We found it out by people like John Boy. Now, they might do a better job than Major League Baseball. Here's a shortstop, Carlos Correa, a great player, and he, he responded to Bellinger's comments, uh, the ones that we told you about on Friday where he said, you know, they, they stole an MVP away from Judge and stole a World Series away from us. Here's Correa. Well, the problem I, had is, I have is when players go out there and they... They don't know the facts. They're not informed on the situation. And you just go out there in front of cameras and just talk. And uh, with me, that's, that doesn't seem right. It doesn't sit right at all. So when he talks about that we cheated for three years, I mean, he, is a, he either doesn't know how to read, he's really bad at reading comprehension, or he's just not informed at all. But the commission's report clearly says that all those activities were conducted in 2017. 2018, nothing happened. 2019, nothing See, happened. See, right there, is, that's, that's wrong. Yeah, he's uninformed. 2018 is in the report. They cheated in 2017 and 2018. Right. 2019, they supposedly found nothing, so he's wrong right there. Now, he also says, uh, tell Cody Bellinger, he tell, tells Cody Bellinger that we earned that World Series. So when I analyze all the games, we earned that championship, Ken. We didn't steal it. Instead of talking about it, he should have done something about it. When you look at the World Series, they left so many guys on base on Game 7. Throughout the whole World Series, Cody didn't have a good World Series. So for him to be talking about us stealing that championship, don't talk about it. You should not be talking about it. You should have done something about it. Because when you analyze the games, we won fair and square, Ken. And we earned See, that championship. Again, I like Carlos Correa, but if you got to the World Series because of cheating... Even if cheating didn't win you the World Series, you won a World Series because of cheating. You cheated against the Yankees in the best of seven ALCS. Maybe they, you don't even make the World Series. So let's say for some strange reason, I don't believe it, that they didn't cheat in the World Series. You still cheated to win the World Series. And yes, the Dodgers didn't hit. Cody Bellinger had a terrible postseason. But please, don't say we didn't cheat it, we earned it fair and square, when you cheated against the Yankees in the ALCS. So, yeah, well... One thing leads to another. You cheated to get the record that you had so that you would play four games in Houston against the Yankees rather than four games at Yankee Stadium. So please don't well, tell me that cheating and, didn't help you. You sound like Jim Crane. But this is what baseball created because he's not completely wrong as far as, like what he was saying earlier, he was wrong about 2018 because they did find something in 2018, but they investigated 2019. You know, they didn't find anything. These are the things that get built up because they have the backing of, the, of, of Major League Baseball. And the protection, too. Like you said before, I throw at them, I'm going to get a bigger suspension than anybody that cheated did. It just looks really bad that they now Major League Baseball is the protector of the Astros. And also, Correa really defended Altuve. Cody, like, you don't know the facts. We're all in there. And nobody wants to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about this. I'll say Altuve was the one guy that didn't use the trash can. A few times that the trash was banged was without his consent. And he would go inside the clubhouse, inside the dugout to whoever was banging the trash can, and he would get pissed. He would get mad. He would say, I don't want this. I can hit like this. Don't you do that to me. He played the game clean. The data of the banks that's on, the, on Twitter or whatever, it shows it. Um, Altuve played clean the whole year. 
When you look at the best numbers on the road, he hit 400 on the road. He didn't see nobody of the MVP. He earned that MVP. The Altuve should talk then. Well, here's Altuve Let's about defend on Correa defending his MVP. I really think uh, Carl, the thing I thought before, Carlos a great teammate, what he did, go out there and defend their teammates. It's, it's amazing. That's, that's the only thing I, I have to say. Now, he also avoids questions about using trash cans. Yeah, like I always said, and you know, I'm not going to say this right now, I always said that I like to talk about team, I like to talk about team results. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here taking... Uh, full uh, responsibility for for the team I appreciate what what Carlos did you know believe me you know that's that tells you about uh, what kind of person what kind of teammate he is and I tell him a hundred times uh, what I feel about what he did it still doesn't explain the shirt in 2019. Trout came off today and said, you could take my shirt off. If you had a home run to send your team to the World Series at home, you could do whatever you want to me. That's what everybody feels. Gary Sanchez said, you could take my pants off. And I think that what surprised everybody is what Carl Ravitz said on Golik and Wingo today. He said the anger towards Houston has not or was not anticipated by baseball. This blew up around them in such a way that they hadn't anticipated. Um, and it's rare uh, that you ever have player... You know, on player uh, anger, venom, it's never really vocalized that way. It's certainly not to this extent. I think the question's going to be, um, as somebody passed me in the hallway yesterday and said, my gosh, this has become mean girls. Uh, what, what then ah. happens after that? You know, what happens when you're looking at a guy 60 feet away and is he going to throw a fastball and hit me here? And baseball is going to cur try to curtail that. All right, so the interview of Correa was done by Ken Rosenthal. Um, for MLB and also for The Athletic. Now, Andy McCullough, who covers baseball for The Athletic, talked to Justin Turner about Rob Manfred's description of the Commissioner's Trophy as a piece of metal. And he said, Turner did, of the Dodgers, the only thing devaluing it right now is the fact that it says Commissioner on it. It's just un unbelievable. Is he that out of touch with our game that those are his comments? Again, not a winning day for Rob Manfred, not a winning day at all. And I don't necessarily agree with Don that he's going to lose his job over this. The players could be as angry as possible with him It's a, if the other owners are angry mm. as well. I don't know if they – I mean, How okay, let's say, let's say Hal Steinbrenner and the group that owns the Dodgers are angry at him. I mean, are the other owners that angry at him? I don't, I don't know. I mean, you have to – it would take a – they just signed into a long-term contract. It would take a huge uprising well, amongst the owners here's, who are going to make a lot of money with Rob Manfred to, to, to get rid of him. But players hating him, I mean, that has nothing to do with his job security. Just look at Roger Goodell. I, I, Every NFL player despises Goodell. Yeah, but you know what? Goodell has power in negotiations that Manfred does not. The players have always had the hammer in negotiations. Not, not the last couple of ones. But in history, they, the players never have it in the NFL, ever. So Roger Goodell could take off the players all he wants. Owners don't care because he makes them a mint, and they win in the CBA negotiations. Will that be the case here? And the owners will blow with the wind, Michael. Like, they may love them, but you know what? If you get enough owners that don't like them, then, I did, I, then, I, then they can win a bunch of other guys over. And this might be my talking point if I'm in the room there with them. Is this the guy that you want negotiating our next CBA when the players hate him as much as they do? Remember, they're so worried about that. This is going to be the guy representing the owners in the negotiations. And un unlike Roger Goodell, he does not have the hammer Goodell does. Goodell doesn't care because he knows the players will cave. At least the baseball players have shown an ability, a stick-to-itiveness to get World Series Don, canceled, to sit, to, to, to live through strikes and lockouts. The players in, in football have not. Don't you think, though, that the players' complaint is with the other players? Manfred didn't discipline them because of the fact he knew he wasn't going to be able to win. Talk to Tony Clark and say those players should be disciplined. But is that even is that a conversation that's even happening right now? I don't know. I mean, those that's up to the players. It's not up to uh, Rob Manfred. But, they're, but they do not like Manfred right now. He has become the face of this controversy but now the owners i'm sure they love manfred but i'm sure there's a, a few that don't how do the steinbrenners feel about him right now how do the dodgers feel about him right now you know so there could be enough owners who would be like what, what the heck did you do why, why are we protecting the astros why is crane you know the guy that you're so protective of and caring so much he's now become your robert Kraft, for god's sakes so well, why, why do i want to have to deal with this now we got a, now we've got a cba to deal with 
and the guy that's going to be sitting at the table with the players, the players can't stand being in the same room with the guy, destroying the guy. Now, we got to bring somebody else in. The Red Sox, J.D. Martinez defended Manfred's decision to grant the players immunity, saying... Um, the facts of the situation would not have emerged. 100% they wouldn't have, Martina said. That's the way it is. There was never any hardcore facts that were jumping out at you. If you weren't for players talking and getting that immunity, I don't think no one would have said, uh, ever said anything. But, but what did we get out of that? A $5 million fine and two people losing their jobs that nobody in the world cares about? Walk down the street and ask how many people know who Lunau is or A.J. Hinch is. But the players, they know. The players got away with it. The championship still stands. So they gave him immunity to get information to get what? Exactly. What was the trade for? It makes no sense. This is handled so bad. And also, it would never have been investigated if not for Mike Fires and the Athletic. It, because teams, 10 to 12 of them, had complained about the Astros cheating. It was an open secret in the game. The Astros were serial cheaters, and nobody ever ever, ever investigated them. The investigation was spurred on by the quote by Mike Fires and the uh, story by uh, Ken Rosenthal and Evan Drylick in The Athletic. Mike Fires must be your hero because he's an Archimedes. That's today's Mike.